Hi everyone, my name is Maya Ahmed and I am the Virtual Content Specialist for 7th Grade Science. In this video, I will review two digital formative assessment tools called Poll Everywhere and Answer Garden. First, let's start with Poll Everywhere, which is an online polling platform that allows students to vote or respond to teacher-generated polls and questions. So teachers can pose a multiple choice or open-ended uh, question, and students can respond using a smartphone, computer, or iPad. So when you arrive at their homepage, it looks like this. And if you scroll down, you can see all your past polls that were activated and that were completed by students. And if you click on new activity, you have all these options to create. So you can add a multiple choice question, okay? And you can have more than one op option as a, uh, your answer choices. Um, you can create a word cloud, which is cool. So you can visualize audience responses as a dynamic word cloud. So this is for if you want um, to do an opening question with like a one word uh, response to a question or ask students what do you think of when you what's one word you think of when you hear the word climate change or biodiversity and so on so this will um, organize it in a nice word cloud you can do a Q&A so participants can respond to a question then upvote or downvote their answers and this is great for gathering consensus uh, this is really cool you can add a clickable image so you know they have all these images here so for example, you can click this image on body systems and it says click anywhere to track how many, and then you can ask a question like which, which uh, part of this image shows the skeletal system and students will click on that response or click on that section and that response will be collected. Um, you can do a survey, which is a series of questions that um, students can answer in their own pace. You can do an open-ended question, a competition, and the students compete to see who answers the fastest. And they have a lot of other questions. So ones that I like are icebreakers. Um, you know, they have something called emotion scale, which is great for social emotional learning. And if you want to add these at the beginning or at the end of class or have them complete it for both at the beginning and the end. Um, you can have them select on a map so you can um, ask a question and say where do you think would be the most volcanoes and have them at click on the map. Um, you can click a brainstorm activity uh, and so on. So they have a lot of these options here. Um, I really like the retrospective also. It's really quick. They have a question already there. How did we do this week? What did we learn? Okay, so kind of like a reflection exit ticket. So these are just some poll questions that I did. And if I click on one, So as you can see, I asked this question, um, and these were all the responses that students um, entered. Um, so you can change the visual settings. Uh, you can have this viewed by students if you want them to view it, or if you just want it easier to, for you to see it, you can have it as a text wall, which is what it's like right now. Okay, and as students answer, the responses will come up. You can have it as a word cloud. Okay, and this is not so helpful because the word cloud works the best if it's just one word answers. Um, you can have them as a cluster. So all the student responses are clustered together. I'll make it full screen. So all the responses get clustered together and you can see it all together. And if you want to project this to students, you can do that as well. Or you can have it as a spotlight where it spotlights one answer at a time. And you can change the effect speed as well. Um, some other options 
Uh, you can change the color scheme. Uh, you can change the font, the voting instructions, the title, background, and so on. And then you will click save. And as students go to, um, you know, you you will have your unique website, so pollev.com, and this is mine. Um, or if students are using their phones, if your school has um, an open cell phone policy, they can easily use their cell phone and they can text this number to join. And you can change how people can respond here. So if you want them to text or go to the website, you can do that. Um, this is for audience restrictions. And I suggest you ask students to enter a screen name just so you know who is answering what. You can change the response settings. It tells you um, certain things that you may need to be careful of. So for here, for um, unlimited responses, it says each poll has a limit on the number of responses it can receive. So, you know, if you have a, a class full of 30, you would not want students to answer more than once. You would just want them to answer once. And this is for moderation. So um, just for the free account, you cannot really moderate. So, so um, just be mindful and have students enter their names. And that way you can keep track of who's answering what. So students do not need to create an account for this. Um, and again, you cannot moderate responses. Um, and you can't see who, who responds, but you can download uh, the responses in an Excel sheet, which shows you uh, their names and what they did. So I will show you what that looks like here. So again, this is the Excel sheet you get once you download it. So you can click, um, again, if you go back to activities, You know, and if you click on any of these activities, and you click on reports, uh, you can go back. Or even if you go back and you click here, and then click uh, download, you can download the reports. So once you do download the reports, it will look like this. Um, here are the responses and here are the screen names. So you can have students enter their names uh, just to keep them accountable and make sure they don't post any inappropriate responses because if you do decide to project the responses as they're coming, you don't want anything that's inappropriate that students would see. So you can, you know, if you are using this as a graded assignment, uh, you know, you or as a participation grade, you can make sure students enter their name you can show them something like this, like this. these are the responses that I get and how I get them and, what, and it says what time you get them, um, just to keep students accountable. So if you do decide to use this as an assessment tool to enter grades, you can show students that their responses will be collected and graded as participation to keep them accountable. Um, otherwise, it's great because you have all these options to make for your assessment. The next application we will review is Answer Garden. And it is a more minimalistic assessment um, or brainstorming tool. So it looks like this. You can just go to Answer Garden, uh, Create, and this is the home page. So Answer Garden is great for questions that require brief responses, preferably one or two words, and where students can enter more than one response. Um, so this is the home page, and if you go, you can click on the topic section, and here is where you enter your question or topic. Uh, you can have it as a brainstorm mode where students can submit, submit unlimited number of answers, including copies of the same answer. Uh, classroom mode, students can submit unlimited number of answers, but may only submit each answer once, so it cannot be the same answer. Um, 
a moderator mode in which the answer will be submitted to um, Antigarden so you can manually approve the entries on your answer garden. And a locked mode, which is when the, you will want to lock it to prevent any students from answering new from entering in new answers. Um, and again, this is a very minimalistic version of an assessment. Uh, preferably, they want the answer lengths uh, to be 20. Um, however, you can make it 40. So these are the characters. So this includes any special characters or spaces. And that's why, you know, I said it's more minimalistic. It's usually if you want like one word answers and you can add in an admin password if you want to. Get in a reminder email. You can include a spam filter, um, change the font and the discoverability. So this is how long this will be active. And once you click create um, and you launch it, it will look something like this. So I just asked a simple question. What do you know about climate change? I should have said answer in one word because there were students who were answering in a few words. But this is a sample answer garden. So what's nice about it is that the answers that were entered by uh, more than once by different students. They are visually displayed bigger um, and the other ones are smaller all around so it's like a word cloud and it tells you how many uh, students answered that same response. So seven students en um, entered warming the world. Okay, And it tells you exactly how many students answered each response. Uh, you can click share, you can export, uh, you can get a QR code, which is something that, you know, you can share with students if you want them to answer with a QR code. It, does, it takes some time to generate. Um, or if not, you can just give them this link on Google Classroom or you can just project this link on your screen and students can enter it and answer. So now I will just go over the highlights for Poll Everywhere and Answer Garden. So for Poll Everywhere, you have multiple choice um, questions. You have a word cloud, survey, open-ended, emotion scale, uh, clickable images, and more as options for your assessment questions. Um, you must make your own assessments. So unlike other platforms which have pre-created assessments, here you would have to make your own assessments. You can download student responses in any way. Um, one thing to be mindful of is that you cannot moderate student responses, so it will be important to make sure that students are entering in their name and having them um, held accountable for their responses, so uh, letting them know that this will be graded and that will ensure that they will enter their real name and a, an appropriate response. Um, so Answer Garden is a more simplified version of an assessment. It's a quick, it's more of a brainstorming tool and helps you get a quick pulse of the classroom or get a quick idea of their prior knowledge regarding a certain subject. Um, the responses are anonymous, so something to be mindful of. You may not want to project the Answer Garden right away because students may put anonymous res um, inappropriate responses and it will show up right away on the answer garden. Um, there are no options to save the responses unless you do take a screenshot. Uh, and again, you know, this is just a way, this is a more simplified version, so you may not even need to save the responses. You just want to know what students are thinking at that moment. Um, there are only options for open-ended questions, um, not multiple choice, and you cannot moderate responses. So those are just some things to think about. And these are the two formative assessment tools that you can use for your classrooms. Thank you for watching.